Hello everyone, welcome back to the next lecture on OSI model. In this video, I will cover transport layer. So in the previous lecture, we have already discussed about application layer, presentation layer and session layer. So let's get started with transport layer. So we have discussed that application layer provides interface and presentation layer defines the format of the data and session layer creates, maintains and terminates the session. Creates, maintains and terminates the session. Then transport layer's responsibility is to ensure end-to-end -end transmission of the information or you can say it will control the flow of an information from end-to-end. -end. This layer is responsible for reliable transfer of data by ensuring that data arrives at its destination error-free and in order. So the transport layer is layer 4 and it ensures that the messages are transmitted in order in which they are sent and there is no duplicacy of data. The main responsibility of the transport layer is to transfer the data completely. So transport layer receives the data and convert them into smaller unit called as segments. So transport layer can be termed as end to end layer as it provides a point-to-point -point connection between source and destination to deliver the data reliably. So while doing this, it will be doing multiple jobs like segmentation, sequencing, checking the connectivity, acknowledgement, windowing, flow control and identifying services. So we'll be discussing the functions of transport layer one by one. So let's discuss the segmentation and sequencing function first. Let's say we have two computers, computer A and computer B. And they both are connected with a cable. Now machine A wants to send a data to machine B. Let's say this is the data which machine A wants to send to machine B and the data or the information is my name is Neha. So before sending this data to machine B, it will be divided into segments. So this data has been divided into segments and the process of dividing the information or data into small segments is called segmentation. All right. After dividing this data into segments, let's say I have divided this data into four segments, we will be adding sequence number to all the segments. So I have added the sequence number to all the segments, one by four, two by four, three by four, and four by four. So adding sequence number defines the order of information or data because data will flow from different different paths so it's not mandatory that our data will flow from a single path once our information is received at the receiver's end it will be reassembling or rearranging the data into its sequence so i have sent this data to machine b and machine b has received this data and it's not mandatory that it will be receiving the data in same order or in same sequence. So after receiving the data, machine B will rearrange this data with the help of its sequence number. Let's say I have received this information in this sequence or in this order. So once receiving the data, machine B will again rearrange this data with the help of the sequence number. Before sending the data, machine A will first check the connectivity and it will check the connectivity by sending SYN message to machine B. Now machine B will send the acknowledgement along with a SYN message to check the connectivity of machine A. 
and in return machine a will send the acknowledge message and this whole process is called three way handshake process and this process is used to check the bidirectional connectivity so once the machine will check the connectivity only after that machine a will start sending the data or information to machine b now we'll discuss about windowing and flow control sometimes machine a can send 100 segments to machine b and machine b will send one acknowledgement message to those 100 segments and this process is called windowing as you can see in the example this is the sender and this is the receiver sender is sending three segments at a time and receiver is giving one acknowledgement message to those three segments sending multiple segments without getting acknowledgement is called flow control and here sender is sending three segments at a time so three is our window size and in a previous example where machine a was sending 100 segments to machine b 100 was our window size and this helps in flow control so window size is decided on receivers capability to receive number of segments at a time now we'll discuss about another function which is identifying services so in transport layer we use two protocols tcp and udp tcp is transmission control protocol and udp is user datagram protocol so i have differentiated between tcp and udp tcp is used for reliable communication whereas UDP is used for unreliable communication. Now what reliability means? So reliability means if machine A is sending a packet to machine B, machine B will be sending an acknowledgement message to machine A which will inform machine A that machine B has received the packet. So this is called reliability that it will get acknowledgement for every packet that is sent and unreliable means there will be no acknowledgement message unreliable is faster because it won't wait for acknowledgement message so we will use udp for real-time applications for example while watching live cricket match you would have seen some green pixels on the screen it is because that information for that pixel has not received and TCP is slower in comparison to UDP because it will wait for acknowledgement message for every packet that has been sent. Now TCP is connection oriented. For example, voice call. If you are calling your friend, once he or she will answer that call then only i will give them the information or the data but in case of connectionless for example sending an email or sending a text message receivers availability is not required or you can say receivers acknowledgement is not required for sending the information there's one more function of transport layer is to create port number port number is attached with ip address to identify from which application this information is coming from so transport layer creates a random source port source port number and attaches port number for the destination let's say if a traffic is going to web server it has a standard port number 80 transport layer creates a socket and sends it to network layer adding source port number because if two applications are running at same time going to a web server when reply will come from the web server transport layer needs to know which data goes to which application so it will be identified by the source port number so what is socket socket is 
the combination of IP address and port number. Okay, that's it for today. So we'll be discussing about network layer, data link layer and physical layer in our next video. So I hope you like this video. If you do, then please like this video and share it with your friends and your colleagues. And do not forget to subscribe to this channel and press on the bell icon so that you can receive the notifications of our next videos. Thank you for watching.